I'm starting out in Embird Studio. I keep my uh, hoop size set at 120 by 120. So I'm going to go to Design, New, and I've already set a new hoop size for this design. So if you haven't done that, you go to Hoop, and then you set your width and your height at 25. Oops, that one went down to 23. And then press OK, and then Apply, and you'll have your work area of 25 by 25. The next step is to import an image. So I go to Image, Import, and I've already saved my image in a subdirectory here and then open. You do want to say yes to this where you're scaling the image to fit that hoop. And there's my image. Uh, it's a good idea to make your image a little bit lighter so it's easier to digitize. So I go to image and background filters and you can just move that over. And by moving, I usually just move the top slider. Oops, that's too far. And that just makes it a little easier to digitize. Apply. Now you're ready to start. I'm going to use the magnification tool to make this a little bit larger now. I have purposely made my nodes pink for my beginning and ending node, which should match up. They don't quite in the sketch, but they will when I'm finished. And then green for the nodes uh, on the internal part of the design. My first node will be a connection, starting on the pink node on the side. I go up to the junction and then I know I need a junction at the base of the leaf and then I'm going to go up to almost to the tip of the leaf. Okay, Enter to accept those changes and that part is finished. Next I'm going to set a column for the actual leaf so I choose the column tool and this is my beginning node. I'm using the column method A so I pull the two beginning nodes apart. I can, the, with the A method, you start on the side that's highlighted here. So I can put a node here and pull that out to a sort of a leaf shape. And then I have to get the other side and then I can put a node down on the other side. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get the nodes to um, move where you want to. If that happens, the easiest thing is to just put the node a little further out and then move it back to where you need it. Notice that this bottom lobe, I have tried to digitize this before, and because it's so small, in order to get that heart shape, I would have to have a lot more nodes than I really want on this small design. So I'm going to compromise a little bit and change the shape of the leaf. Uh, the actual fixing of these nodes I can do later once I get into the border area. I'm going to accept that and then press Control, control G to see how it stitches out, and that's good enough for now. The next object is a connection, and notice that the node that we start at is highlighted there. I'm going to go up larger here because this is an area that's really quite easy to have a bit of a mistake in. So I need to get back to the center stem, so I'm going to go right here, and then I want to go down to where the previous node was. It's a little difficult for you to see on the screen. And I'm going to go up and check Snap to Object and Snap to Node to make this behave a little bit better. And then the next place I'm going to a node is right here, where I, I'm going to need a node to connect the next segment. Okay, that's enough for that section. And I'm going to zoom back out a little bit now. The next area is this curly cue, and we're going to use a backward path here to go all the way out to the end of the curly cue, then to return back to the node that we started with. So I start with a connection and that's the beginning. I can probably get away with about three nodes here. And I've digitized this before and two wasn't quite enough. So something like that. Okay, when I get there, then I just accept that by pressing con uh, Enter. And then there is two ways to use the backward path. One way is to do Control B and then it will make the bas backward path. The other way is to go to Transform and Create Backward Path. So I'm going to click that. If you look over here on the Objects bar, you can see that both of them are there. Uh, I'll just click on another one so you can see. So there's the forward path and the backward path on the connection. 
I'm going to go to another connection now and when you do highlight this curly cue make sure that you are choosing the last curly cue that did have the end right there. Uh, now my sketch is just a plan and it's not quite accurate because I need the curly cue to start before the leaf. So I'm going to move this connection, uh, this next node a little bit upwards and I'm going to accept that. Now we're ready to do the curly cue. But here's another little tip and trick. Rather than re-digitizing that curly cue, what I can do instead is go over here to the two front and back curly cues. I'm going to group them by um, just going to a group one. And now I'm going to duplicate them. So I right click and I duplicate them. I prefer duplicating rather than copying because you're sure that you've gotten the other, <laughs> the other object. Okay, I'm going to move that over here and I'm going to turn it around by right clicking on one of the nodes here and then curling it. And the only problem is it's going in a different direction than I really wanted so I'm going to flip it now. So I go to transform and I think if I do it vertically Yes, that will work. So I just rotate it to where I want it. Now, I'm not going to have it perfectly matched up because I'm going to fix it later, but you just want to get close there and you can tweak it later on. Uh, okay, so that's my curly cue again and it'll be the same as this one. And because I have grouped it, uh, the two parts should stick together. All right, I continue on with another connection. And this is, if you get your curly cue mixed up, you'll notice that that beginning node ends up up here. So you have to be careful about that. Now I'm ready to go down to the leaf. And I know I'll need a branch right there, so I'm just going to put that in now. And then I need one here. And then finally I'm going to go out to the tip of the leaf. Okay, and that should more or less work. So I'm going to accept that. I decided I want that leaf a little bit longer, so I have extended that line somewhat. Now I'm ready to go to a column object, so I click on the column tool. I'm using the A method again, and I've just recently updated my version of Embird that uh, just came the other night, and notice that now you can see which column you're on, which is a great addition. Okay, I'm going to use the A method, so I'm pulling my two nodes apart. And the highlighted side is right there, so I'm going to put one there and pull out that into some sort of leaf shape. Then I need to go over to this node here, and now I'm on the other side, and I can put in the second side of the leaf. Okay, and as I said, I'm not going to try and get that perfect heart shape. I know from past experience that uh, getting these nodes to be just right so that it will zigzag stitch correctly can take a little bit of fiddling, but I'm going to accept that. And then I'm going to go Control G to just see it. And it's not bad. I could tweak it a bit, but it'll it'll do. The next section is another connection. And notice now that the node is just a little bit off that stem. And if I stitch from there, I'll end up having a little bit of a thread that I don't want. So instead, I'm going to put the next node right here and accepted it. Sometimes it won't, and you have to click off to the side. Now I'm going to go back to that node I put in earlier, right there. Okay, and match those two up. And I'm going to zoom back out so I can see what I'm doing. And I will probably end up needing two nodes to really get this matched up well. Um, so I'll put one there. And I'm noticing that my first node is just below the center line. So I'm going to try that. It might not be perfect, but I'm going to accept that for now. We finished copying our design in the design area of Embered Studio. Now we're ready to prepare for importing it into the borders area. I always save my design because you might want to work on it later. Rather than deleting the image, what I prefer to do is go to image and the background filters again. And I like to just dial down the image, apply it, and then have another look at it. So that looks pretty good. Um, the next step then is to save this in your design area, so design, save as, and I've put it with this tutorial and save. I've already saved it, so I'm not going to actually do that. And so now you have, if you need to go back to this, you have it saved somewhere. But the part that we're going to use now when we go into the Ember border area is over on the objects area, we're going to click and drag all the way down 
and we're going to go Control C to copy this. You could also right click um, and copy it. Either one works. And we're done there. So we're finished with the Embird Studio part. The next step will be go going into the border area of Embird Studio. Here's a review of all the things that we've done in this step of the design of a border. We have done all of this work in the ember design area rather than in the border area. In this next step, we're ready to actually go into the borders area to complete our border design. Okay, you can just leave this open. Now we go to design and now we are going into the borders. So border and we're going to a new border. And we have that familiar looking borders area now. We, we're not able to actually import an image into this, so what we're doing instead for our workaround is we're going over to the objects bar and we're going to go control V or paste and there is our design that we made in Embird, the regular design area. Now we can move this down into the border area. If we've done everything fairly accurately, these nodes will be close to the border area and I can tell that mine are just a little smaller, so I'm just going to pull it out a bit and I'm going to place it as close as I can to the border area. Okay, And now I'm ready to start actually doing my editing in the border. So just click Escape now and our design has gone into the borders area and now we're ready to actually do some tweaking. I've done a couple borders this way where I do an image first in the design area and then move it into borders. And the big advantage once you get into the border area is that you can see the whole thing uh, blown up and um, it's quite useful. I had a little error around the stem which I fixed already. In looking at my match up here it doesn't quite match up so I'm going to go back up and fix it in the actual uh, border area. But it is really great to be able to have this preview area because you can often see little errors that don't show up as well in the actual border screen. I can see now why that doesn't quite match up. So I'm going to fix that and then we'll come back. One last thing to have a look at on the borders uh, object bar is that if you look at these little curly cues, I have still grouped them. So if I right click, I can ungroup and see that there are two. And same with that one, I can ungroup it, see that there's actually two. Um, what's helpful on that is that uh, when I did do an earlier practice version of this, I had gotten the beginning and end of the two curly cues had gotten mixed up when I flipped them. So ungrouping them, being able to see where each of the nodes is at the beginning and the end ended up being, being important in order to fix it. Anyway, the next step now is to save this in parameters. Uh, so we go into parameters or control P. We're going to go into the global area and I'm going to call it um, oh, scrolly, scrolly leaves, I guess. Okay, and I'm going to apply that and I'm going to generate stitches or go to OK. Okay, and then in the border area, I want to go to design, border, uh, save border as, and I'm going to save it uh, in an area I've put here. So, okay, and I've saved it. Okay, so there's an example of a border where we digitized the border in the Ember design area. Then we imported, we didn't import it, we copied it into the border area. And that enabled us to use a um, sketch or image behind our design, which makes it a little bit easier to draw. Keep in mind that this border is fairly complex, and I would not attempt to stitch that at much below the 25 by 25. Um, so when you're doing these complicated ones, yes, you can do them, but and it is a vector, so you can um, make them in different sizes. However, the physical reality is that you don't want to get too close on the actual stitching. And here's our border. I have tweaked a few nodes, and here's what it looks like in the 3D view. Now we're ready to actually do a test stitch. I'm in my test file now, and I've gone to the icon up at the top to bring up the user editors. I'm in the borders area. I've gotten my file, and I, unfortunately I forgot to make it not be blue because it makes it harder to see, but there's my border all loaded. To use my border, I highlight my first shape, which is the circle, and over here I can go to parameters, 
and I'm going to click on the border parameter and when I do the drop down my user border that I've loaded should be on top and there it is so I can load that and in terms of the size of the border I'm going to change it to 25 no, let's try. I'll try 20. It should stitch out okay at 20. And on the the length here, I'm also going to put 20 because this is really uh, too small to stitch out in a really small border. And i and in looking at the parameters, the other thing that I'm going to change is the density. I don't like these anything less than 4.5, and I'm okay with everything now. And apply and there's our border. Okay. Now I'm going to do the line object, the curved line, and so I've got the scrolly leaves border loaded. I go up to width and I'm going to put 20. Okay. And then the length, I'm going to go 20 as well. And okay. And everything else looks okay. Oh, density, I'm going to change that to 4.5. Uh, and in actual fact, sometimes I stitch these out in fine cotton and I go to an even higher uh, density. Apply, and OK, and there's our border. Here's a small review of the things that we did once we got into the borders area. Here's a couple not very good stitch outs that I did, but the border itself stitched out fine. I just had a few thread problems. Here's some things that I hope you learned from the video. It's really good to have a grounding in the one-pass borders before we move on to the two-pass borders. And the next video that I really had fun making is going to be about two-pass borders, and you can really have a lot of fun with them, provided you understand how to do the one-pass.